So as we shoot this, we're heading into allergy season. So um, what, what should people know about that? Yeah, I think that, you know, so, so a lot of people that, that come in here, uh, you know, the mainstay of treatment is really just kind of medical management. Like, what is that? Well, it's pills, it's sprays, it's, yep. it's stuff to try and get you through that season so you're not hurting. Well, wait, 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 what, what, what are allergies for the, for the uninitiated here? What are, what are allergies? It's an easy, everybody thinks they kind of know, uh, like there's words we say that's like, oh, everybody, al allergies. Right. What are allergies? And wh so, why is there an allergy season to begin with? That when, uh, yeah, so the, so the seasonal component to allergy for the most part when it comes to grasses, trees, um, weeds, are pollens and things that are released into the air in kind of cyclic ways. Um, and, and there's different geographies that have different pollen patterns and so, but allergies in, in themselves is your own body's immune response and, it, and it's the reaction of the world around you. You know, and it's kind of innate to who we are, it's our DNA. It's a positive reaction or a negative reaction? Well, it's a positive, not in a good way, but it's a positive reaction in the way that inflammation and things can change in the nose in a result. Why would the, pos body, possi why would the body possibly want to do such a thing? it wants to fight those pollens or those allergies. Why would it do that? That's crazy. Because it's overreacting. Why? <laughs> I feel like I'm getting pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why? Uh, why is it overreacting? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it's, it's an over, over uh, you're going to splice and cut this shit out for sure. But, <laughs> now they have uh, to. Now they have to. Um, How hmm. about this? Yeah. Great answer. How about this answer? <laughs> How about, have we cleaned our environment up so much, so clean, so we've gotten rid of everything, that when the body experiences something of the world, of nature, it views it as foreign and wants to shut it down and get it out? Huh. You ever, so yeah, I guess, I guess it's the same idea about why peanut allergies, for example, there was a whole movement to avoid peanuts altogether and then reintroduce actually now at a younger age to try to prevent did, the allergy. Did later Leonardo on. da Vinci have a peanut allergy? I think he painted about it. <laughs> yeah, the Mona no. Lisa. Yes. Is, but no. Did, so peanut allergies, huh. a similar concept. You take something that's common and you shield yourself from it and you put it in your body and your body like, fights it. Not, we don't want to go into food allergy because it's a whole different thing. Right. But, well, like, did he have hay fever? I, I'm going to go with no. I probably, I don't right. know. We'll have to, like, teleport ourselves I, That's a good backwards. question, though. Were there allergies? Were the allergies as prominent 500 years Absolutely ago as they are today? Not. I wasn't there, but I'm yeah. going to give you that solid without it. Because allergy issues, um, they really started with the Industrial Revolution is when all this stuff, allergies, asthma. Now, allergies, asthma, airway issues in general started when we as humans stopped living sedentary. like animals. Right. And, you know, and started living as refined, dignified people. Right. And so even, even in this, earth, the earth we live on right now is you are massively more likely to have allergies and asthma if you live in an industrial country, a Western country specifically, versus if you go to wherever you want to go to the, the, to the off the grid, those people generally, now this is kind of the, the weird duality of things, is those people are both not going to have allergy issues, likely, they're not going to have asthma issues, likely, and they're not, not going to have sleep apnea issues, likely. They're going to have their wisdom teeth, likely. Their, their airways are better equipped to handle the world mm -hmm. out in the boonies than you or me or all the human beings in our society today. Um, and part of that gets to the allergies, but part of it gets to our, our we're animals at heart. And our, we as animals might have, be, we might be protecting ourselves so much that we do, we're doing ourselves harm. So back to this allergy situation, I, I, I throw it at almost everything that we do as a practice is focused on unwinding some of the situation that we as a, an animal have gotten ourselves into. Um, and so allergies are really the body's sort of attempt to deal with challenges that come up against it. And so it takes, so now we're, we're you know, now we're sitting, coming into springtime, it, in springtime, you know, the flowers bloom, they pollen, everything's, you know, there's pollen mm -hmm. going around. So you breathe a little pollen in, your nose says pollen, pollen is the enemy. What do we do with the enemy? We kill it. And so to kill it, what do we do? We're going to swell the lining up in your nose. We're going to turn the mucus on. We're going to start making your nose run. We're going to make you sneeze. We're going to make you itch. We're going to just shut that thing down, man. And, and that's what's going to happen. And that's what allergies are. So let, so let me ask you a question, because a, a patient that I saw recently 
said, th this was the statement, you know, and they had had procedures done, breathing better through the nose, more open. And, and he said, this is the exact words for my allergist. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And he said, my allergist said, you shouldn't have had that procedure done because now you are getting 10 times the amount of allergens in your nose than you did previous. Right. And your allergy is going to be worse. Yeah. Gotcha. So what do you think? What do you think about that? You believe it? Uh, you know, I don't. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't at all. No. Now, granted, I can see how conceptually someone might think that, okay, well, I, I am breathing more through my nose now, therefore I'm, I'm 10xing the amount of allergens. But the reality is, is like you're exposed to those things regardless whether you are fully breathing through your nose or someone breathing through your nose, you're breathing yep. and you're getting exposure. But so the, the allergist is basically saying that <clears throat> you, we should have just let the nose win. Like if the nose that wants to shut down, we should just let it shut down. Right. And breathe through your it. mouth, man, because right. that's going to be really what's, what's, you know, that's the right thing for you. So I would flip it around and I would say, that I would answer the question, well, so if you have allergies, if you have a nose issue, what, what, what's your issue? It's anatomy and it's aligning. And what are allergies? And allergies are a lining problem. And if you have a lining problem, by definition, if you have allergies, you have a lining problem, wouldn't the right thing to be, if you were a doctor who could do something for somebody, and I say, hey doc, I got a lining issue, and the doc says, that's, that's, that's too bad, you know how we're gonna solve this? We're gonna shut your nose, we're gonna give you both, we're gonna give you an anatomy issue and an allergy issue, and then you're not gonna breathe any of those allergies in through your nose. Right. Problem solved. Right. Here, pay my bill. Yeah. Yeah. No, that doesn't make any sense. That's exactly what there's that, that insane statement is what the allergist is saying. Now, would I, would I argue with the fact if your nose is more open, you're going to be pulling more stuff through there? Yeah, that's sure. true. Um, that's what the nose is supposed to do. The nose is supposed, you have a nose to breathe. Right. Uh, and it's supposed to be moving air. So it's, if you have a lining issue, the best way to treat that lining issue is to make sure you don't have an anatomy issue. Uh, most people have both. Most people who suffer have both of those things. And so if you're suffering with a lining issue and an anatomy issue, the only way we can treat your allergy issue or lining issue is we can make sure your anatomy is open. And the reason we can say that, we, the reason we can say that with conviction is because we can do both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, if we could only do one of those things or none of those things, then it's the impossible. Right. But and again, uh, most of what we do is we do it because this is, it's just, it makes sense. It's how I'd want to be treated. It's how you would want to be treated. Treated If you've got a lining issue and an anatomy issue, okay, let's look at options to address, address both of those things. Uh, and generally speaking, if somebody has both of those things, the first step on the pathway to getting them feeling better is if you got an anatomy issue, let's get the anatomy working better. And all of a sudden, man, whoa, lo and behold, that lining is much easier to treat if we've got space to treat it. Right. You know, because most of the treatments for allergy issues <clears throat> that most people experience are medications. Right. And a very common um, part, sub-segment of, of those medications are nasal sprays. And so, back to your ridiculous question and statement, is <laughs> if you had- Wasn't an, my uh, statement, you, but you, I thought you, it was it a good thing to mouth, bring up. That's um, true. The ridiculous <laughs> words came out of your mouth is, if you have, you know, something that's shut, um, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. So I mean, right. I'd say, I'd flip it around and I'd say, nice thing is now that the anatomy is open, we can put all our attention into that line. And the nice thing is there are options, there are medication options, there are actually procedural options nowadays to help to treat that lining. Um, you know, it, it, so there's many, many options, but it all starts with that same step. And I, and I, I, and I, I don't find that controversial, but for some reason, it is. For some reason, it's controversial right. to say, let's just, let's start you with an airway that's open. Or at least let's confirm that your airway is open. Like that, to me, isn't asking too much. And then, you know, we'll move on from there. So yeah. back to the allergy situation, you know, we could go both ways. We could, we could flip it around. We could, you know, somebody's got an allergy issue and their, their, their nose is shut down. We could try to work this with, let's leave your nose shut and we're gonna to try to do everything. We'll maybe get you on allergy shots and see if we can dial back that allergy situation. And that's an okay, like you could do that. Uh, the reason we don't do that often is it tends to be kind of a fool's game. And so if that's the only tool you have, then that's what you're gonna use. Right. And you're gonna oftentimes, you know, sort of be spinning your wheels. If you can go multiple directions, then you just, you're gonna use the right tool for the job, I guess is the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, and so there are a lot of patients who have had procedures probably like, you know, last part of 2019 and, and you know, are kind of healing up now or maybe in January. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be 
getting into their allergy season. And for them, they're going to be thinking about, okay, is the season going to be better or worse? You know, and, and for most of those patients, I tell them it's going to be better, you know, yeah. because those sprays can get in. And the way to use it for all those patients out there, start that, that, that nasal spray, Flonase, whatever it is that you use a month before the season hits, use it consistently. That way you're fully armed and yeah, ready. When absolutely. those pollens come in, your body's not going to want to shut down as much because you've primed the lining not to react the way that it maybe had in the past, right? So, you know, it's really arming that up. And then, you know, I, I'm very much of a, I don't want patients to take pills type person. Mm -hmm. And so all these antihistamines, Claritin, Zyrtec, all these other things, the goal for a lot of our patients and for me for them is also, let's get you off that daily pill or sure. those pills that you need during the allergy season. Let's just use sprays because the reality is you and I both know, sprays are more effective to treat allergies than, medica than oral pills are. And Claritin, right? You know, and a combination maybe of a Flonase or or a antihistamine type spray, but that's more effective in the nose than any sort of you know Zizol, Zyrtec. But those get a lot more marketing dollars and everything else. Sure. You know. Yeah, I mean, and that's I mean, again, we're biased, so don't make no mistake about our but bias right. too. But yes. Well, we're here. We're biased in that same mindset, and I've said it many, many times. Is I don't want to be on a medication I don't have to be on. Right. If I have a choice between fixing a problem versus putting a Band-Aid on it, I'm gonna fix it every day of the week, especially if the fix is, is fairly straightforward. Like, yes, absolutely. If, if we need to, or I need to be on a medication because I need it to, I need it because I, when I take it, I feel better and I, I, I feel like that's a fair exchange, then I'm gonna do that. If I have an opportunity to get rid of it altogether, I want it gone. Right. And um, now that's not everybody. I, mean, I, I, not everybody is wired like that, obviously, because that that simple thought process is not how the world around us um, is is built. The world around it is built is, around us is built out of band aid after band aid. Um, and I don't know who it's built for, because at least for the patients that we treat here, they tend to come from that same mindset. And, and the, the, the other truth there is there are, there are people walking around where, um, yes, you, the medication, th this is really something that you're going to have to learn how to, you know, live with and deal with, and we're going to help our best to make it happen. Um, and that's fine. Like if it's a, yes, we have to do this because it's really necessary, fine. If it's a, you're going to do this or else, and we're not going to think about anything else because we, you know, you, whether you like taking pills or don't like you taking pills, we want you to take a pill. That's not, that's right. not right. And it's just, it's not. I think, unfortunately, especially, I think, especially because all these, many of these meds are now over the counter, as a lot of people are suffering needlessly because they have an issue that um, they don't know what to do with. They go to the pharmacy, they stand there, they look at the hundreds of medications, and they just grab something and they say, okay, let me try this. And, Maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't help, but at least they're doing something. And the, the sad reality is most of those people have issues that could be addressed in a simple manner, and it's just not sitting at the pharmacy aisle. And right. That's the bottom line. And so it's, it's also um, the challenge for many of those folks is trying to find a doorway into a medical system that's not built for them. The medical system is not built to give you a solution. The medical system is built to keep giving you a Band-Aid so you keep coming back. And that is not a system that I want to be part of in any way. And so we don't operate like that, but um, we're just little old us trying to do what we're trying to do. Um, but at least for the patients who come to see us, they, they seem to, you know, sort of mesh with that thought process. But, you know, absolutely. I mean, if you had allergy issues, there's no reason. I, I think if you've, you have allergy issues and you got it handled, wonderful. If you've got allergy issues and you're struggling, it's almost assuredly a better way mm -hmm. it just is mm -hmm. and um it's just and, and the way to find that better way is to find somebody who has a variety of of treatment options that that, right. that might work because at the end of the day it's i mean it, it shouldn't be that way well and you alluded to sprays are one option but there are some patients who get a procedure done they breathe better through their nose but they don't want to be on sprays mm -hmm. long term and so there are options to treat the nerve that makes the nose swell inside in reaction to those allergies and things like that and so there are more long-term solutions that are procedures that can be done for that as well. Yeah, which so. is, and even if somebody, I guess then I would go the next level and I'd say, well, even if, even if, say you, you are a guy that loves your medications, like you are just Mr. Pill Popper, <laughs> and that's how you're built. Um, that's me. That's you, and so that's okay, you know, that's fine. You know, wouldn't you, even if you were Mr. Pill Popper like that, wouldn't you want to make sure that what you're popping 
is the right pill for you, um, you know, kind of a thing. Like sure. it, it just makes sense to make sure that you're on the right pathway um, for, for, for what you're doing. But, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know, I guess maybe we're anomalies and maybe, maybe everybody just loves their, um, loves their pharmaceuticals, but um, not me if we not avoid me. it. Yeah. yeah.